How you doing, Paolo? Hope you're well. Hey, mate, how are you going? All right, you're looking. Is that the new one? Watch. Is that the new one? Can't hear you, mate. Am I talking to the wall here? Oh, uh, yeah, it is, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, all right. How are you? That's the latest one, yeah. You're all right, yeah? All right, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah, mate. Good. What are you on with? I'm just sat outside the hotel, mate. Uh, we're not going to get any better than this. It might be a little bit noisy because we're next to, not far from a road, but we're going to have to make the best of it. Yeah, no problem. We're here in restaurant. I'm just outside on the terrace. Um, you won't be able to see it behind me, but just across the road, there's a there's a massive complex, just uh, restaurants and bars and little park area. It's it's gorgeous, but we're a bit too noisy there. So I've come back to the hotel just to, like I say, literally across the road. Richard, yeah, and, uh, emails. Can you back. just Richard? I've had a few emails. Can you just straighten a few people out here that you're not some man of leisure that's like sat in hotel restaurants all day and slobbing about? You actually do put some grafting. <laughs> I'd like to refute that rumor, but no, it's true. I just I just plead myself and sit in restaurants all day. No, of course, I, of course, I work. I've worked. Um, I'm work. I'm grafting now in Romania. I've been here since January on and off. Uh, while I'm here, I'm doing uh, little minimum 11 hour days. Sometimes I'll do a Saturday if I'm stopping over a weekend. And uh, I've been grafting like a lot of people have since I was 16 non stop. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, when you've been, when you've been working in, in decent jobs for 38 years, you know, you can afford to uh, build a job, can't you? Yeah. I'm an old man now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're uh, you're knocking on a bit now, pal, aren't you? Yeah, but what I mean is 38 years, never been on rock and roll, um, working all my life, paid me taxes all my life, and, um, you know, worked in factories, worked in businesses, and then, you know, progressed from there. And, uh, you know, if I do say so myself, things aren't too bad at the moment for me and the missus. So, yeah, so every now and again, I can... I, Every now and again, I can. Every now and again, I can get out for a meal and have a couple of glasses of wine. Hang on a minute. Mock tea tonight, though. Yeah. Say again. Oh. Ha. I've seen a bit. Wait, one of my mates said, "What's that Sammy Carbonet?" In fact, to nick my motor. It's all right. Right. Uh, <laughs> wonder who that was. Just about to start going out and showing them why they used to call me uh, Gripper <laughs> back in the day. Uh, yeah, you've. Uh, I know I've had a couple of emails. How come Big Richard's not on? Blah blah blah. Is he a working man? He always looks like he's eating a big meal or sat smoking a big stoogie. I says he works his knackers off that man. Yeah, it's. Uh, get, don't get me wrong. You, as you know, mate, we we do stints and then uh, we'll get a week or two off and then we're back at it and then we get a week or two off. So I'm quite looking at. Um, we do get a lot of time to do what we want, but in between times, um, um, me and my partner, and I mean, I'm not about my business partner, not, not my wife. Uh, she works and nads off uh, in her own business. But yeah, while we're here and while we're at it, it's uh, rough with smooth, you know what I mean? Swings and roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you and Alina went to uh, It's Big Freeze versus White Collar Wardley. What do you think to it? May I, it, I thought it would be a decent fight, but it ended up being a really, really good one, didn't it? It were a good, we're a same classic. level. It were it were a classic. I, I and I only really went for the main event. I was interested in Marco and I was interested in Whitaker a little bit uh, because I'm a boxing fan. But I only really went for that main event, and it were only because it were a coincidence that we were down in London anyway, a bit of a break, and I, I knew it were on. So uh, I got some tickets in the last week at fight, and it weren't quite a sellout, but there were uh, there were quite a few where we were. There were quite a few tickets left. I mean, you saw the video I sent you, didn't you? So in that bit, um, there were quite a few tickets still at normal prices, but it were, I'd say it were about ninety percent full, and then crowd got the money's worth. Definitely great fight. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, mate. Uh... Uh, do you think that they were clipping each other because they didn't have the technical skills to get out of the way? 
I think I think um, a little bit on the Wardley side. I think he's got a long way to go. I think on uh, with, with Fraser, I think that um, he has got him. He has got him, but he's only at, that's his ninth eight or ninth fight. And he and even though he's he's he's, he's still transitioning from an amateur to to a professional. I don't think there's as big a gap in amateurs as, and professionals as there were 25 years ago because yeah. they don't just teach him to stand upright, throw one-twos and blah, blah, blah. But there's still a gap. And he's still, even though he's like 34, he still is doing that transition. I think they found each other at right time. Big Freeze. Big Freeze is 33, isn't he? 33, okay. He's 33. But, and for, for an heavyweight, we know that's not ancient. But and he's not, He hasn't had many miles on clock though, as regards eight... Uh, Eight or nine professional fights, but they found each other at the right time. Timing were brilliant. So, yeah, yeah. Looking, looking back, maybe if they'd have had that first fight, it wouldn't have. You know, not first fight. The original dates, it might not have been as good. And I definitely would pay if they didn't go two again. I would definitely pay. Go down and attack. That were Alina's first boxing match, by the way. All right. I'd definitely go. Yeah, I'd definitely go down and attack her again. She like it. We in. Yeah, she enjoyed events, uh, and she. She won't watch it on television because it's too close up and she can see all blood and snot. But from where we were, you could hear punches going, but you couldn't see all the damage until later on. So it was a bit more calm for her. From where we were sat, I looked at like sort of ringside seats, but you know yourself, going there with a young pretty lady, you, you can get yourself into Bali, can't you? There's some oh. rowdy lads sometimes. <laughs> so where, 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 we, where we were sat, it was like a shared suite. And there were only six people in it, so it was like we had it all to ourselves. It was it was uh, really lucky. We, we were brilliant. She loved it, and I'd definitely do that again. If they, if they had a rematch next, and it were at the same place, I'd, I'd go down again, especially for that fight. Who did you have winning it? Before the fight, I had Wardley, but just. Mm. Oh, sorry. Yeah, before the fight, I had Wardley to win. During fight, I had I think I I think I emailed you this. For me, Fraser won by two clear rounds. Yeah, I had Big Freeze winning. To be honest with you, uh, I think it's Big Freeze had a raw deal. He can go home. He's got to tell his kids he drew, but really he won in a Big Freeze, and I think he got shafted. And I, I don't think he doesn't sit well well with me. Be, well with me because. Even though Big Freeze is into his thirties now, nah, he's still like a young lad, isn't he? He's like a young lad in his head and that. And I hope it doesn't knock him. We give him a bit of stick on here with nickname and giant Karamak Easter egg and that, but he can fight actually. Olympic bronze medalist, and I think, I think he had a raw deal, and and I think he's took it well. But I hope it doesn't knock him because I I think I think he could have a big big run in him him, him you know in the next couple of years. I rich, I do rich. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure, mate. I mean, I mean, I think European levels is probably about it. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. Of course I do. But I, I think European levels as much as he could possibly hope for, depending on how bigger lads get on over the next five years. But that then takes him to 38, 39 himself. So I think the big boys are going to be up there still in front of him for five, six years yet. So I think he's going to be on domestic and European scene. And if he, if he, if he ends his career with a British title and a European title and an Olympic medal, that's an amazing career, isn't it? It's an yeah. amazing career. I'm not bother what anybody says. Well, the way I see and it, we do. Go on, sorry. Go on, go on, Richard. Go on, sorry. So we, we we do we do we do give people a lot of stick, and it, but it's not meant we well, sometimes <laughs> you might be different. So it's not meant with malice. It's we said this before. It's just an opinion. At yeah. the end of the day, whether they're a two fight novice or a journeyman. They're doing more than you and I will ever do in boxing, aren't they? Yes, they are, yeah. So we know that, but we, but we've got an opinion. You know what I mean? That's it. Would you like to uh, see it's Big Freeze with a new trainer and a different style and maybe a bit lighter in weight? Oh, it's it's a difficult one, and I tell you why, um, Russ, because. I don't think he's a concussive one punch merchant and he needs to, to be competitive in, in the way he's in. He probably needs as much weight as he's got on to live with people so that the, he demands a bit of respect. I think any lighter and his pop might go, 
and he might get steamrolled. Uh, I don't know that. You know, I don't know how hard he hits, but he's not he's not piled through everybody in his first few fights, as he's not dominating and being a, a road man. I think he punches hard enough to grant respects. He punches in twos and threes, ones, twos and twos and threes. Uh, and I think he can command respect from that way. So it didn't look it didn't look too out it didn't look out of shape to me. It, it, I mean I always look at him I look at him uh, and his face is the biggest indicator and his face was lean. Uh, as far as phrase concerned anyway. And he looked like he were in good shape. And he's a tall lad, isn't he? Six five, six six. Six six I think. Mm. Um that's Wardley six five, isn't it? Which did that surprised me as well. I thought he was six three. But um yeah, so to answer your question, new trainer, I don't know. I don't think any lighter because I think he needs that weight to command respect. Oh, you mean you mean you you think Fraser needs that extra extra couple of stone because he's he's that height and he needs to carry it. Yeah, and he needs to, he needs he needs to when you're heavier, you're stronger in the gym. That's yeah. just a fact. And when you, and when you're heavier, you punch harder. Yeah. Now, yeah, you, you, the payoff is you. You then got to think about your mobility. He don't seem like he's dead on his feet. Uh, he looked. He looked the fresher at the end. Uh, yeah, by a long way, by a long way. Uh, he didn't take as much punishment as Wardley. Collapsed at end though, didn't he? Big freeze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he he gave it his all, didn't he? More. He couldn't give any more, could he? No, he couldn't. No. So yeah, it was it was great. Good to see him come through it, like you say. If he goes home, he's going to tell his kids he didn't win. He's going to tell, but he's going to tell me Drew. And when they grow up and they see that fight, they're going to be prouder than him than he could ever imagine. Of course they are. They're going to say, "Do you know what, Dad? We had you nicking it, but it's not your fault that the judges are blind men." Is it exactly? Let's have it right. That judging yet again, yet again. Don't even get me going there. Uh... But but just before we go off that, I have got to say about Ward, we can't take anything away from Ward Lee. Oh, we can't. He, no. showed, he showed a lot of art in that fight. He showed his genuine toughness. So this white collar thing's all right. But he took punches in, faces, in the face all night. And you've got to, you've got to give them both the props. So uh, think... I ain't got a bad word to say about either of them in that fight. Do you think people? Do you think people like Lee Froch can feel a little bit aggrieved because Lee started out as amateur, then went obviously went on to be a plaster and a builder, and then came back to it, uh, you know, in in, in his uh, late thirties to uh, on his thirties to uh, to do white collar. But do you think Lee can feel aggrieved because if Lee, I think, because I think Lee's styles a bit, he's got a bit more than Fabio. You think if Lee had been a bit younger, he, he might feel a bit aggrieved. He could have gone all the way. When you look at somebody like Fabio doing that, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing enough of him, mate. I think I've seen right. one of his fights. I think you probably saw his last last fight, mate. So you you're a better place than me. What I would say is there'll be a lot of people who who are tough blokes who are maybe in the forties now who probably would, would have never made it to being a boxer. But if they'd have been in this age of social media, or Fabio um, in his twenties. Yeah, they they could have you know they could have caught you know they could have caught jumped on that bandwagon and that bus. It's all it's just timing, isn't it? Mm. You know, I suppose I suppose there's there's people from seventies and eighties who made a ton of money compared to a lot of people watching this channel, including myself and yourself. But compared to the superstars, <laughs> excuse me, compared to the superstars of today. They're not making as much, are they? Uh, Richard, are you all right there? Is that a uh, drink that you've got there? I don't know what it is. Is it going down wrong hole? It's 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 lemon and ginger tea, mate. I wish it was something else, but it's not. Not uh, not touching stuff until either I get back or maybe maybe this weekend I'll try and try a couple, but not during week. When you back? Uh, we uh, I'm back on Wednesday afternoon. Mate, it's froze on me. Your uh, it's big free. You freezed me up, Richard, on your screen. What's going on? You there, mate? I, I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think that Wardley now 
should have and Clark should go straight into a rematch, or do you think they should go go around the outside and meet eighteen month down line? Uh, it's, it's a risk either way. It's a risk either way. If I if I, I don't know how much money Wardley uh, Clark's got, but and I'm sure he like <clears throat> not scratching about for a, a cup of tea, but. I think that if they built that rematch up, that one fight could turn his life around financially uh, and he would still be able to come back from it if he lost it. And on last performance, he'd have to put in favourite now. So uh, if it was me and I am financially motivated, I'd try and milk that rematch for all it were worth because, um, you know, he could they could definitely sell out the O2 again, for sure. They could yeah. command a bigger purse, for sure. And listen, they're not going to make tens of millions or multi millions, but let's say they both get a mil each out of job. I don't think that's unreasonable for selling out a fifteen thousand seat stadium. I think that's doable with revenue and uh, everything that's a sponsorship and everything that's associated with it. Uh, so, if it was me, mate, I'd be trying to make as much money out of it game as I could. If I was still with Dennis now, I said, Dennis, what do you reckon? Wardley Clark is it a pay per view? Do you know what first thing Dennis would say? Yeah, we're a stack card. That's what he'd say straight away. No messing. And any promoter would... Do you know what? I'm sorry, mate. Go on, I interrupted you this time. Sorry. I didn't speak. Right, I said... I forgot. Oh, what. I, well, yeah. what, I, what I think, mate, is... You said about Dennis saying it'd have to be a stack card. Yeah, Dennis would say, well, what it is, Russ, that'd have to be a stack card to be a pay per view because they're not big enough stars and it's only a British title. But they did it with Joshua and White, but they had a bit of intense beef. But I think if they build this up and they have a good, you know, like a chief support, I think it could be a pay per view, you know. Well, you tell me how pay per view works then, Russ, because what I can't understand is if they, if they did it on pay per view, that means that they've got to generate... Sorry, I don't understand why that that is only not extra to what they would get if it wasn't pay-per-view. And they haven't got to charge 20 quid for it. What if they charge 4 99 Yeah, but it's, it's, the, only it's the, actual, the actual rigmarole of it all and there's all sorts of stuff that was on behind the scenes that has to be done so it is pay-per-view and all that. And I don't know what full ins and outs, but I get the impression that everybody gets looked after when there's a pay per view and there's a lot of messing about and meetings and this and that. But Dennis would just say, look, that's a, it'd be a, Eddie Earn would build that up into a pay per view with a stack card money, Eddie. I don't know if that Ben's going to do that because he's a bit all at sea, isn't he? Because they're all trying to cut his legs off, aren't they? Basically, all old boys, aren't they? All old brigade. Mate, it's like I heard Eddie Earn say the other day, he was like a little bit uh, derogatory about him and then he was a bit complimentary about him because he finished off by saying, listen, he's made some mistakes. You probably saw it. He made some mistakes, Ben, as did I. That's what Eddie Earn said when I was first getting into it. And he's just the new kid on the block, isn't he? So, you know, Warren's Warren. Earn's now the established player and biggest player, only just now, but the biggest player. And he's coming through, and he's got to take his licks, and he's got to he's got to come through those tough times because if he can go the course, uh, and the other boys sort of fade away, and and uh, Frank Warren's lads aren't as successful as him, which I don't know if they will be or not, he's got a massive opportunity, hasn't he? Well, listen, it's an hard game. I some of, some of the tales I used, we used to talk about Dennis that when when he used to he's been he's been obviously done deals with Don King. All, all them lot, and it, Aram and on. You know, you've got to have Isaac back here. These are like serious dudes, and all they want to do really is see your contracts. Because they always used to don't let them see a con what our contracts are, because they want to have a look at everybody's contracts and see how they do it. They're all wily old foxes, you know, all of them. Don King, even now, that's, that's just my opinion, like of it. But I think the pay per view, years and years and years ago. Then he said to me, I were at HBO officers, Luda Bella and some other guy, that I, I don't know if it was Art Palula or whatever, I forgot his name, and he said, Dennis, pay-per-view is supposed to be for them fights where you say, you know what, Porky, we need to get back to yours tonight for that pay-per-view. We can't miss this. 
them sort of fights. But what happened after Audley Harrison and Davy Day, they shut the box on it, didn't they? They shut the lid on it. Then they started it up again with Froch Kessler. Froch Grove twice, and then the floodgates opened. They let Joshua have it and the rest of them, and they have milked it, haven't they? And it's been rinsed now to such an extent that pay-per-views now, you don't even need a world title, do you, for it to be a pay-per-view? If they've got a bit of intense beef, it's a pay-per-view, isn't it? Yeah, the model's totally changed, mate. I mean, back in that day you're talking about, there were none of these uh, YouTubers knocking about, and there wasn't as much competition uh, for viewership on a platform as there is now. It's, yeah. it's totally saturated and people have got so, we've talked about this a million times, people have got so much choice on where to spend the dough. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a watered down product and it's only, the, you know, mainly it's only the really massive fights and and the, the you know, the, the housewives' favourites where you'll get non-boxing fans buying the, the pay-per-view. Whereas before, when it were on terrestrial and it were new, there was not there was not as much choice. So you might choose instead of going to the cinema, you might choose to stop in and, and watch a fight. Now nah, there's a there's hundred things they can do with the dough, isn't there? Oh, craziness, mate! Absolute craziness. Uh, Joshua's last opponents, last four opponents: Franklin, Elenius, Wallin, and Angano. Would Josh would Fabio Wardley and Clark deal with all them four? Yes or no? Wardley, uh, I don't think Wardley would necessarily deal with Ungarno. I think he'd you be don't too think strong. Wardley would be a man Norton two in boxing. No, not just any man. It, it, that's a little bit of an unfair question. If it were a Norton two Germany journeyman, he'd walk through him. I don't think Wardley would be scared of taking that challenge on, but I don't think the result would be like the Joshua result. Joshua and Wardley are miles apart, aren't they? Oh, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I think Joshua probably does Wardley, maybe does Clark at this moment in time, but them four opponents, Joshua's just four. I'm still not up on them, Richard, to hear Eddie Earn come out on IFL saying, my man is the best heavyweight in the world. I am not buying that rhubarb. I'm sorry. No, I'm not buying it either. I'm not buying he's the best in the world. I just think he's, you know, the gulf between him and, and sort of worldly standards huge. I think after top five or six, um, after top five or six heavyweights, um, you know, there's a big gap. One more, please. Yeah. Who would you say? Who would you say, Richard? Is who would you say is the number one heavyweight in the world? You, you, you know, you know that answer. You know, you, you're Fury saying Fury, fan. aren't you? Yeah. I'm saying Fury, but I'm also a Usyk fan. Uh, anybody who's watched me on this channel before, well, they're going to fight that, next month, so. so that they're going to duke it out to see what best is right. Who would you say is third? I'm gonna to have to. I'm gonna to have to say Joshua, mate. Joshua, then maybe Zhang now. Uh, unless Zang's somebody proves me wrong. It. It's just been what? It's just been done. What for? You've just been beat by Parker and his Zhang. Oh, sorry. I meant. Uh, I meant Joseph Parker. Sorry, I beg your pardon, mate. Wait, so you're gonna go? Fight, you feel sick, one or two. Joshua Parker. Joshua yeah. done Parker. Parker's done yeah. Wilder and Zhang. Do you think he was spoon fed them? Or did he get him at right time? He... Because the combined age is 80 and two months, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're right. And I also think that uh, that were a big... Uh, you might not have thought so, but that were a, that were a big shock for me. Uh, sorry, not a big shock. I thought Wilder was favourite against Parker and the only chance Parker had was to execute the game plan that he did. And he managed to do it. So again, yeah. all that soft to him. Andy Lee's brought him on. And that's no mean feat when you think that Parker's being a world champion, no matter the circumstances, he's been a world champion. He's not. He, he has got a few miles on clock, and for Andy Lee to re reinvigorate him and and, uh, and 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 take him on that extra extra few miles, I think it's a massive feat. So hats off to both of them. Park has proved a lot of people wrong, including myself, because I thought he was on the slippery slope two did years you? ago. I did, yeah. I, I thought that he. We talked about this before. When it, when he fought 
why, and when he fought a couple of other people, I talked about his body shape. And he's always in decent shape. But when you compare his body shape to when he burst on the scene and he was fighting Andrew Ruiz, it was a different body shape. And he's probably trained a little bit differently um, over a period of time. And he's got older. But now under Andy Lee, he seems to resemble the same body shape as he did when he was fighting, um, uh, you know, uh, Ruiz for the world title and, and Joshua when he first fought Joshua. Yeah, he looks he, in bit of more... doesn't he? He does, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you could, uh, and you could, while you're thinking a question, and you could always tell, you know, back in the day, when Mike Tyson never came into the ring looking out of shape, but I once heard, um, I once heard, um, looking at what's his name, his former trainer, uh, legend, American guy. No, oh, no, I'm not his first trainer. Not Kevin Rooney, next one. Ronnie Shields. No, no, no. Back in the early days, who pulled gun? Who pulled oh, gun Teddy out Atlas. Him. Teddy Atlas. I remember Teddy Atlas when he when he lost against Buster Douglas, and he said, "Look at Tyson's back." So he looked in shape. He got the biceps. He got the chest. He got the six pack. But if you looked at his back, there was no definition. It was a bit fleshy. I always look at things like that. So you can be in shape. You know, you can be in shape where you can walk around and you fit to the 90% of the blokes in the world, but you can not be elite. Mm. And uh, I think that was like Parker. I think he was an elite athlete for a period of time. He just dropped down a little bit and Andy Lee's managed to get him back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... All right, then. Uh... Tyson Fury... Two, two more topics to finish off on. Tyson Fury... Press conference. Did you see it? I saw it more than press conference. Why did they I have saw that? A little bit, and I saw a bit at first conference. Why? Uh, I don't know why they. Had, I don't know why they had it because I was been thinking about this earlier, and I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but I was thinking about this earlier. Um, it's not. It's not like they're going to have to sell that fight. It's not like uh, that the. the the people putting on the fight are worried about whether it makes any money or not. We talked about that before. They're, they don't give a monkeys. They've just got more money than anybody else. And it's a, it's an opportunity to showcase the country and, and the culture and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like they're trying to sell it. So it, it didn't make much sense for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, before I but think... it was go on. Okay. Yeah. See, so it was, it was funny to see, um, What's his name? Ricky Gorman, cringing and laughing when uh, when old John was uh, doing his stuff. Did you notice that? I noticed uh, John Fury, big John Fury, big fighting man, and Spencer Brown were clapping like seals, like seals every time anybody said it about Turkey Neck. You know, old Triple T, His Excellence, man, whatever he's called. All it, all, it, all it looked to me like one big blowjob of that turkey dude from all of them. They're all grown men. They all should be embarrassed. All blowjobs, a lot of them. That's my opinion on it all. What? Why they need a press conference for a May 18th fight that were announced weeks and weeks ago. It's four weeks till fight, fight week this Monday. And they're having a presser just to let us know that the fight's still on. Well, we know it's still on. Because they told us. But uh, what a damned in indictment it is where... They're having to wheel Fury out to say he's going to fight him because nobody believes he's going to turn up because he's a shit house. That's not my opinion. So he says he's going to turn up. Well, turn up and do the business. Simple as. Talk about it. We don't need press. Well, I think. It, I don't think we yeah. need press for that, do we? Really? We've already had him, haven't we? How many more do we need? We know it's on. So get in your camp. Do you think Usyk's going to do one? He doesn't need to come out and say he's going to fight Fury. He's signed, has he? Just look like a loving to me, or just to tickle people. Yeah, well, ego. Break top in Morkham. Come on. You think he's got better things to do than me wheel up there? Come on. He's just protecting their investments. God man, he's trying to have the to them. <laughs> uh, Johnny Horscott, he was seen overnight in Sheffield with five chicks doing the business. All of them jumping in his rain wow. at the right time of his life. He's getting a well, bad, he's a single you know, man, isn't he, Horsecock? Yeah, and uh, 
listen, you know what it's like when uh, all of a sudden you come out, of, you know, having some commitments. He's a free man. Good luck to him. He's, he's got some cash. Uh, according to you, and I've got no reason to believe otherwise, is uh, he can he can put it about a bit. So why not? More power to him. Johnny can put it about a bit. He's a legend. Johnny's a legend. <laughs> Johnny can put it about a bit. Old Johnny Oscott. Go on, Oscott. Uh, Okay. Uh, Mick Hennessy. I'm hearing he might be getting sky dates, but I'm hearing they might be sharing them with Ben, a few others. I'm hearing Dennis is in mix. You know, it's all going to, they're all going to be changing at sky when this deal's up. I'm not saying that Ben's going to get all 20 dates. I don't think he is. But I'm not saying they're going to discard him, but I think Sky, if they share them dates, I think that's a good deal, Richard. It makes everybody else audition for it. And I want to see up-and-coming promoters getting dates as well. I don't go on with I'd like to see Steffi get a chance, a pilot episode on Sky. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what all these other young promoters can do. We don't need to we keep going back to the brick tops and hillsers, you know, them lot and the rest of them. Let them let people audition for us and, and show the fans that they want to put good things on. What do you think? Well, I agree. And I don't, well, two, two elements to that. One, I think that, um, well, first of all, I think you're right. I think that, but that might be driven by the fact that, um, Brick Top and Brick Top and uh, Eddie Earn are facing East, aren't they? And they're going to have their eye off the ball a little bit. And, they're facing East. They're facing East, mate, aren't they? They're facing where the money is, and that's where their attention's going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. where their attention's going to be. Well, you've got to understand, though, Richard, to... it's this, right? All roads and... to Saudi for the heavyweight division, but let's not leave UK boxing in a mess, whereas kids don't uh, go on a show because they, they think they're going to get the nod in Saudi. Kids who are 10 and 0, get it out of your heads, Saudi. I don't know who's tickling your arseholes. It ain't going to happen. They're not interested in you 10 and old men that have yeah, that... 10 stiffs. You know what I mean? That... Yeah. That, that That's a little bit with my point. I think that because of that circumstances, they're leaving a bit of gap and, and, and broadcasters like Sky and um, whoever, I can't remember the guys who replaced BT, who bought BT, what they're called. Who? Formerly BT. Who, who, who took over BT? T, uh, TNT Sports. TNT. So there's a gap now, isn't there, where yeah. they, they're not going to be filled by Warren and uh, Earn. And Shalom probably hasn't got the stable, so they might be forced to have to open the doors. If they're still interested in boxing, that is. Yeah, if they're yeah. still interested in boxing, they're going to have to fill that gap. But but the other side to that as well is what you were, we were talking about 10 minutes ago regarding Ben Shalom. Is that what I would want to know with Mick Hennessy and uh, and uh, Dennis and and the others? Is what are they what are they actively do, doing to put shows on and to try and get in with Sky? And are they knocking any doors down to try and to try and get their fighters on shows? You know, we, we we've got to think of that side as well, mate. Yeah, yeah, you have, mate. You have. Uh, Max is uh, out in Malta next month on a big run show. Apparently, he's going to be fighting TV TBA. Yeah, uh, I've uh, I've got tickets for it. Have you? Oh, <laughs> no, I am, mate. No. <laughs> You're not going to see Max, and you've good luck to him. You Max is power, Richard. You can't do that. No. Well, no, listen, Max good luck to, to him. I we'll wish him all the Max. best. But uh, like we said it. We'll have to get Max down to the factory, won't we, now? Get then? him back on. Get him back on. Maybe okay. maybe, maybe, we, maybe, we can do a, a three-header. A, a three he, uh, he got me doing... Me, fitness. you, Max, and... Uh, yeah. He's got me doing fitness videos, uh, Kevin. Taking piss out me, aren't they, now? They sat upstairs in that office just laughing their heads off. I've seen, I've seen a cup. Unbelievable, mate! What they're doing? I've, the seen, I've seen, I've seen a couple of them. The bullying me, mate. Look at this, flipping it. T. My wife's bullying me. That's why I'm on tea. How come you're not on coffee? I'll not be able to 
get to sleep, mate, if I want coffee. And it, it's an age thing. Before, when I was younger, I could drink coffee 10 minutes before I went to bed and go off like a baby. But since I've been in my late 40s and 50s, I can't drink it after like four o'clock. Otherwise, I'm like wide awake, like I've been tooting all night. Yeah, I'm like that when I've had a sniff. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing now. They're on about drug testing up there now. Well, that's the way the world, mate. It happens where I am now. Drugs and alcohol testing. First in into my office, he went. Oh, can you? He says to Q today, can you smell weed in here, Q? He goes, no. He goes, okay. And then shut off. He's gone on now, Kevin. So, but, uh, nah. Hey, hey, I'm clean hey, as a whistle to... now. And do you no, know what? Do you know what? I don't even miss getting out of my head. Don't even miss it. Although there's odd time when I see a program on telly and they're all partying, I think, ooh, but nah. Uh, okay then, uh, that's about it, really. Uh, I hope you're well, Richard. Uh, Kevin says, can you come round to factory and about that other when you're back? All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll pop down when I'm back. I'll uh, we'll have, we'll have a good chat and uh, see what's what. Pleasure oh. to speak to you, mate. Hope you're well. Hope you're be well. A little, but... Okay. Well, listen, you have a... Hey, listen, did you eat half of that? What were it? I managed half of it, yeah. It was salmon and uh, salmon avocado salad. It, were, it, it, it was as good as it looked on that photo. So I managed about half of it, but I should have ate probably a third of it, to be honest. I pushed myself too much because it was so nice. But have you been sick? It were, it were gorgeous, yeah. I mean, no, no, I haven't been sick. But I'll be having another one tomorrow, I think. <laughs> well, I'm having my bread and jam. All right, then, mate. Well, listen, you take care. And I'll speak oh, to you. All right, mate. All the best. Cheers, Rich. Folks. Bye. All right, buddy. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was Richard, my good friend from uh, Wickersley. Women love him. Men want to be him. So he, t so he tells me. <laughs> That's about it. Hope you're well. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, four-way Zooms as of next week. Ah, you probably weren't going to, didn't you? Well, we're going to do. We're going to have to change it up to get Julian back in mix, eh? We're going to have to get him to test his wits, test his uh, his mitts against Terry and uh, Rico and Kent. All right, we're going to get a we're going to get an A team and a B team out of the commission yet. All right, chaps. Everybody have a great evening. Uh, that is about it. Okie dokie. I've bagged a big dog tomorrow. I can't tell you where I'm going tomorrow. We've got the big cameras out, the big lighting, the film crew. We're leaving at 6am. Tune in. It'll be done for Monday. Up, up, bang on that. Um, Woodcat. Hawkeye's Corner official TikTok. Booyaka.